Hello everybody, it's your boy Eddie Tripp, and today we have a top 10 list for you in honor of The Undertaker's last match at this uh, last Sunday's WrestleMania 33. We're talking the my favorite top 10 Undertaker matches of all time. Now these are not like the best matches Undertaker has wrestled, because Undertaker has had some outstanding matches, some with Batista and Edge from WrestleMania, and some other great matches he has had in the past. Uh, he think he had a he had a a uh, underrated classic. I, 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 now, now I forget. That's why it's underrated. But he had a underrated classic with somebody who I forget. But uh, well, I, I also let's, let's talk about like the Hell in the Cell match he had with Brock Lesnar. The, the bloodbath that that that, that was. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> um, but. Uh, yeah, that that would be on the, on the top ten greatest Undertaker's matches list. This is just talking about my favorite Undertaker matches, uh, and so these are for me. Uh, well, everything I do on top ten list is for me. That's I should say that, but this is just my favorite. This has nothing to do with like the quality of the match or anything like that. Um, this is not spoiler alert. WrestleMania 25 match, which I remember was number one. So that's the greatest wrestling match of all time. So that's neither here nor there. But let's go ahead and let's go ahead start in the top ten, right? Let's start with number ten. It's the career versus streak match, in WrestleMania 26. Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker. Um, the reason why this is number 26 is because it ended Shawn Michaels' career. It really is. It, it's. This would be, if this is in Shawn Michaels' career, this would be up there. But when you end the career of the greatest in-ring performer of all time, it uh, you can't it, it can't be anywhere but ten. I mean, really, let's face it. You end the career of the greatest in-ring performer of all time. No, it's got to be number ten. Still, it was a fantastic match. It was not the twenty WrestleMania twenty-five classic. That was a five-star classic, but this was definitely close. This was like, you know, the, the four and a half, you know, stars, you know. So, and it was just so, so dramatic. And it kind of reminisced of what uh, happened this year at WrestleMania. With Shawn Michaels, you know, climbing up. Undertaker, Undertaker saying, stay down. And he's saying no, and he finally had to end. He didn't want to end it, but he had to. And it was like what happened with uh, Roman Reigns and Undertaker this past on WrestleMania. <laughs> he, Roman Reigns saying, stay down. Undertaker saying, no, I can't. <laughs> you know, you don't have the balls to end my career. Oh, you don't think so? I should watch this. Boom, spear. Cover counting this over. It's a victory for Roman Reigns. And Undertaker's career is done. So number 10, the career versus streak match. Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker, WrestleMania 26. Nine. It's the ladder match from a Monday Night Raw in 2001. Jeff Hardy against The Undertaker. Now this one is uh, somewhat of a uh, somewhat of a lost uh, classic, I think, because this one. You no, know, at this point, Jeff Hardy's. You know, if you want a ladder match, you put one of the Hardy Boys in it. You put one. That you put Edge or Christian in it, or something like that. So, but this was one where they were, you know, I think Jeff Hardy was trying to get some respect, you know, and this is uh, and this is when Undertaker's around his first a uh, couple months after his heel turn, and uh, he had won the title for you, won the undisputed title from Hogan, who had heard got it. Uh, and so they were just trying to, you know, I think do this thing with respect. Remember, he was on, you know, this was also when John Cena, you know, debuted and he gave him respect. Actually, this would be from 2001. This would be from 2002. I apologize. This would be from 2002. Uh, 2001 was the whole invasion, but this would be from 2002. Uh, John Cena debuted on SmackDown with the ruthless aggression and he snapped Kurt Angle and everything like that. And in other words, and then take a shake out his hand. Uh, this is around that time he was trying to want people, wanted people to respect him. That's what it's about. You're gonna give respect, and they give him respect. And he had the whole thing. Sometimes fear 
is kind of respect, and I think I like that. I think that's someone like that should kind of, you know, that's that should be kind of like Samoa Joe's thing. Samoa Joe's thing should be no one respects me because they don't fear me. So I'm going to make them respect me by fearing me and just be the destroyer, the badass that Samoa Joe is. Anyway, uh, this was this was a great, I think there were set, definitely se several false finishes where you thought Jeff Hardy might win the title, but you never get close enough. Undertaker always came back and stopped him. And then when Undertaker won and he, and he rode up the ramp <laughs> and Jeff Hardy got the mic and he said, I'm still standing, Undertaker. I was still standing. I take a look at the what the you know work down there as if he was gonna whoop his ass and he picked him up. You get a thing. I said no, I can't do it, man. You, you, you gave me respect. I said you're a crazy motherfucker, and he gave me respect. And and, and he ran outside the thing. And it was just, it was crazy how that heel turn was for the Undertaker. The, the, that, that heel turn was it it was exactly. It was like the same thing for Austin. It was just, just just to freshen up the character. And even though he had now gone to like his biker gimmick, you know, this was to freshen up his character. Uh, you know, the, the heel turn, and I think it, it did help uh, just a little bit. Although shortly thereafter, uh, they did go to the uh, uh, not shortly thereafter, after he, actually a year later. Um, they um, they went they went they went and had him go back to his his dead man gimmick, which really to be honest with you he probably never should have left. You know I I know they wanted to do something different with the character, you know but really that that's a that was a character that never should have. And she he should he should have been able to be the biker guy while still being able to um, be the dead man. You know that, that that's it. yeah. I, I think you know he could go the biker thing and everything like that, but still have the you know the powers of the Undertaker and everything like that. So anyway, um, number nine, the match from uh, 2002 on Monday Night Raw, Jeff Hardy uh, versus Undertaker for the undisputed title in a ladder match. Number eight. This is from Fully Loaded, 1999. The WWF Championship First Blood Match in End of an Era. Stone Cold Steve Austin vs. Undertaker. This was the match where if Stone Cold won, Mr. McMahon would have no um, on-screen dealings um, with the um, when it came to the WWF. And uh, this match was crazy. Now this was one of these matches where honestly, they could not do now. Obviously because there is no there is a no blood policy in the uh, WWE, uh, WWE right now, unless it's uh, sanctioned by by, by Vince, i.e. the Brock Lesnar blowing up Randy Orton's forehead <laughs> uh, on a, uh, last year's SummerSlam. But um, I think I think what's one of the things that they um, one of the things they did here, like I said, that you couldn't do now was it was like every week. Undertaker was busting open uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, trying to keep that wound fresh, so that so that when so that when the match came, he, he could easily you know bust him open, and um, it was like that for you know uh, for a while. It started like like that with Austin too, you know, like it was like what. what it was a weird thing because it was after it was the night after the King of the Ring, I believe. It was the night after the King of the Ring, or maybe shortly thereafter the King of the Ring. I can't remember which one, but they had a match with Undertaker and it's a, it's for the title. And Austin pinned Undertaker clean, won the heavyweight title, uh, and then Undertaker came back and then busted open Steve Austin. And kind of, it was kind of one of those things where he was over there, he was standing over a bloody Mr. man, and Austin had bloody bloody him. Uh, he was in a, in a wheelchair for the, like the third time in two years. I don't know what the hell this man made. He's doing these, he's riding his damn motorcycles. He got to stop that shit. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, he he was you know sitting over bloody Austin and a bloody McMahon. He was and that came with the first blood match and then they kept busting him open to keep the wound fresh. And actually earlier that day, Austin had busting open uh, Undertaker so that he got so he had a wound. And 
it was just uh, crazy and I think looking back at it it probably was it probably wasn't a great thing to do actually I think you know it, it from, from you know storyline 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 wise it made sense it really did it really did it made sense um, that doesn't think we want to keep that wound fresh but you know you kept you know that could cause long-term scarring. I mean, if you've ever seen a close-up of Triple H's forehead, I mean, the the the, the scar, long-term scar, and it's just not Triple H. You know, many wrestlers. I mean, Dusty Rhodes before he passed away. If you've seen because of his forehead, it's you know all cut up, and I, I actually think that may not have been from like. Back, you know, back in back in the days, wrestling, back in the old wrestling days, that actually might have been scarred from when he went to ECW for some reason. I mean, he thought he needed to, you know, you know, bleed there you know, in his elder age. And obviously, when you you get, you know, in your sixties, those things don't heal as well as they do when you're in your twenties. And it's just still, and also in thirties, and still, you look at your age for you, and you just tell that. So anyway. Just probably wasn't good, and probably all like the the shots to the head, thing like that. <laughs> probably not uh, good anymore, as we are, as we know now. So I think a lot of that was probably not necessarily a good idea. And you probably won't never see that again. At least in the, you won't see it again in the um, world wrestling entertainment. But um, I, it's one of my favorite matches because that's because of yes, it did get that that that. that that McMahon stuff off television, and I, I really did think that heels as authority figures are so passe, and, and it was getting tiresome back then. You know, you you understood why they needed to do that because they needed to have a storyline to compete with um, the WCW, but. At some point, it just got it got old and it got tiresome. And especially when I was actually looking back at this the other night, that like this when like when they had the whole thing with Vince and, and you know and and everything and you know and you know Vince had like turned on you know he had joined with the union and you know and you know and then he had Stephanie kidnapped by the Undertaker and everything and. And it was, and then he did I'm thinking talking about the higher power, and the higher power turned out to be Vince McMahon. It was just, it was tired. So I mean, come on. And that's what it is right now. Like, really, like, like Stephanie. Like, I, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what her thing is. I want, I want to think that Stephanie just, she just, you know, she, she plays a role because that's what they need her to do. They, they need her to be on television. That she, she does because she, she went a long time, you know, without being on television. But yeah, at some point, and right now, and, you know, she's not the, you know, she she enjoys playing the villain, you know. But I think maybe she maybe enjoys it maybe a little too much, you know. It, it, it's just, it really is time just to go with the faces. And the faces are, are good, you know. You got Kurt Angle, you got Daniel Bryan, right? Those GMs, they they should be on television every week. Shane McMahon, Stephanie McMahon shouldn't be on television, you know, on during the weeks, you know, for special occasions or something like that. And they definitely should not be healed, you know, contradicting the GMs who are faces. It's just, it's, I'm kind of sickened by it, but. Anyway, that's my little short little ramp. Uh, the number eight match of all time, right? This number eight, the number eight match of all time. It is the match from Fully Loaded 1999, the NFL era first blood WWE, WWF championship match, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Undertaker versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. Awesome. Number seven. It's the Undertaker, CM Punk from WrestleMania uh, 29. It's the respect versus streak, and um, this is something. This is one of my favorite matches. CM Punk is one of my favorite all-time wrestlers, and I think it was it was very 
honest to see what was going on by this time. I think th this was, I think, around the time when you start hearing the rumors about The Undertaker not doing well. Uh, yeah, you know, he wasn't, he was having health problems and you know, he just wasn't feeling real, real good. I think the the, 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 the two matches, the um, the uh, no disqualification match at WrestleMania, and then at, at WrestleMania 20, that would have been 27, and then at 28, the end, the, that end of an era match was inside Hell in a Cell. Uh, I think that one was. Um, That one took a lot of them too, and I, I think that that's when you start hearing about him just not really doing good. But he still went out there, put on a fantastic match for CM Punk. They had a great match. Um, you kind of, you got, you know, maybe maybe they went out there not to have a a classic match, but just put on a spectacular match, and that's what they did, and. It also also surrounded about uh, just a couple very short weeks before WrestleMania. Actually, um, Paul Bearer he passed away, and then they had that thrown into it. And I think with respect from the um, the Moody family, they went ahead and they put you know you know they they had him do it. And then storyline wise, they threw in Kane because Paul Bearer was Kane's father. And they had Kane thrown into the thing, and so, it, from, uh, oh no, it was just one of my favorite, you know, WrestleMania things with The Undertaker, and uh, it was an enjoyable match, and that's why it's number seven on my list, Sam Punk vs. Undertaker. Number six, it's the first ever Inferno match, it's Kane vs. The Undertaker, this is from 1998. This is the, uh, the, from the, uh, this is something after WrestleMania. Uh, so, Kane and Undertaker have a match at WrestleMania, which Undertaker wins. Um, but Kane's not happy. Still wants revenge on his brother. So then they come out with the Inferno match. My God. The Inferno match, and this is the first, there's a ring of fire. If you've never seen an Inferno match, it is amazing. It's a ring of fire. They have the, the fire turned up. And everything. And at one point, the fire gets turned down. Kane leaves the ring. But the fire, but the Undertaker, he, he can't leave the ring. And then they start turning up the fire. So what do they do? So what Undertaker does? He does one of his favorite moves to do. He runs to the ropes and does the, I don't know what it's called, but he does the flying over the top rope thing. And he jumps over and jump, lands on Kane. Takes Paul Bear, throws him up into a band, and Paul Bear, you know, starts to bleed. And then Kane and Undertaker, they fight back down, and then Kane, like, he, he throws his arm on the. He throws his arm, was his arm or his foot? I believe, I believe, it, I believe it was on his arm. And I, I believe, and actually, you see right here, this actually might be a doctor photo. Because I believe, actually, he had both arms covered up in that match. He actually had both arms covered up in that, in that match. And uh, so I, I think that, you know, they were going to, he was going to, um, obviously he was going to lose. So this photo might be a little bit doctored. I can't, I, you know, I can't remember. I have to, have to go back and, like, check for video of that, but... I believe, I'm almost sure, he had both arms covered up for that Inferno match. Anyway, he gets knocked onto the Inferno, his arm or his hand is on fire, and he he loses that Undertaker wins. But I, I just I just enjoyed it because it's like a first ever, and it was it was a crazy match. And it, and it really was, and it, I think it, you know, also, I also say, also around this time, I wasn't too big on the the whole. Um, wasn't, wasn't too big on the whole internet smart type thing. 
I mean, I, I mean, I knew what wrestling was, even though I kind of acted like I didn't. But I knew what wrestling was and things like that. But you know, I didn't necessarily know. I kind, I kind of really did think that maybe Kane was the Undertaker's brother. You know, I didn't know that Kane was actually Glenn Jacobs. But um, but I, I really did think that it could, it could have been. Uh, although uh, it obviously wasn't. But this is one of my favorite Undertaker matches. It's number six on the list. Greatest Undertaker matches of all time. Kane versus The Undertaker. The first ever Inferno match. Number five. It's the first Hell in a Cell match. Between Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. And In Your House, Bad Blood. This was... Um... Again, I think, I think this was... It's like when they say... Okay, we, we, we need to do a first ever. Well, we'll put in the Undertaker. Or we're putting in Shawn Michaels. That's what it is. First ever, whatever. First ever Iron Man match, Shawn Michaels. First ever Hell in a Cell match, Shawn and, Shawn and Taker. First ever <laughs> Inferno match, Taker. <laughs> I mean, first, whatever for other first thing they, they did. <laughs> it, it, it's just whatever it was, it was Shawn Michaels and the Undertaker. That's exactly who it was. And... It, it was just, you know, just what they did. And they put on a hell of a match. I thought, uh, again, the story was, again, very told, you know, that this was Undertaker, that this would be what Undertaker needed to get Shawn Michaels to keep Triple H in China out and everything like that. And he got him, and he got him good. And, again, this this was the first time, or at least the second time from what I remember, Seeing an actual blade job, I, I said, and I, I did say blade job. Uh, and it came to wrestling because I, 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 again, I did not know because when you saw it, you know, he did it so fast that you no, know, he did it when he was coming up. You know, Shawn Michaels. There's a point where they go outside, they get outside the cage. Shawn Michaels drop kicks Undertaker into the cage, goes for a drop kick again, Undertaker block it and catches his feet. So when he catches his feet, Sean is up there and he's getting the, the like the blade ready. So then when the Undertaker fits him up to like sheen, slingshot him into the cage, he pulls down and and bam and it's and it's, and it's just there and, it, and it's just it's a massive you know blade job. and you know and of course you know at that point again I was smart but I didn't know how how that happened how, how blood would happen. So I actually thought that this was actually I thought he had effed up Shawn Michaels' actual whole face. I was thinking that his, like, his whole, you know, he had basically sliced his his face off. <laughs> so, I've never seen so much blood in my life. I thought he had actually sliced his face off. And, um, and, and everything like that. This is also the introduction to Kane. Kane, you know, with Undertaker, you know, he gets in the ring and he gives Shawn Michaels the chair shot to the head and, and everything. And it's, he does the, uh, it's over, and then the lights go off, and then you hear that music, and the red comes out, and he walking, and it's Kane, and the Undertaker's at that looking like, oh my God, it's Kane, and he can't believe it. He's like, oh Lord, <coughs> I believe it. And the Kane was up there, he turns off the door, he gets in the ring, and he does like this, and I think, I think it, it might have been a mistake, I'm not sure, but I think the fire goes up. And he kept. He goes around. He you know, like, what the hell? And he goes back around. And then they can pick him up. And he tombstones him. And leaves the ring. And then <laughs> everything goes back out. And Sean is now obviously awake. And he goes up. And he covers him. And it's one. And it's two. And it's three. And it's a victory for Sean Michael. And, and it is just wow. <laughs> wow. It, 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 it's. It still is. You know, a lot of people say Chris Jericho had the greatest debut. I still think maybe Kane had the greatest debut in the history of professional wrestling. And uh, it was a part of my number five match of all time. The Hell in a Cell. First ever Hell in a Cell. Blood, bad Blood match. Or no, Hell in a, first Hell in a Cell match at In Your House. Bad Blood. Shawn Michaels and Undertaker. And boy, those guys, they really worked well together, didn't they? <laughs> you can definitely see that. Number four, another Hell in a Cell match. This is what probably most people would put as their number one favorite. 
And it's really because Undertaker throws mankind off the top of a cell. That that's really that's that's it, it's 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 really it's a it's a it's a four move match that most people would put and give as five stars. And it was it wasn't even really it wasn't really even close. But it was entertaining as hell. Entertaining as hell. Uh, so so Undertaker and Mankind declined to sell. And they fight they fight on the sale and then at some point Undertaker decides to throw Mankind off the off the side of the off the side of the cell. And and it, it's still it's, it's it's when you think about it, it's just it's one of the most dangerous things you've ever seen. Because you don't know, because th- those guys down there they have pencils and they have other things too. And put they could have went in the head and in the body and throw it pencil in the heart. And it was just it was it really was. I, 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 and you know, years later, we're almost twenty years. You know. Next year in June it will be 20 years since that match happened, and I still don't really know what the fuck was supposed to happen. I don't know. I, I don't know if that was, if that was a part, really a part of the script. I don't know if 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 if, if they imp- they improvised. Or what I do know that they wanted to start on top. I do know that that is what this is. It. They wanted to start on top. I, 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 after that, I don't know what else has happened. So, he gets thrown off the cell, right? Lands on the Spanish announce table. The stretcher comes out. He, so he decides, he gets off the stretcher and decides to climb back up. Now, there's a shot. I don't know I don't, I don't know if it's in the original broadcast. But there's a shot where Undertaker is living in the cage. And he's just shot. What the fuck? <laughs> he, you know, he can't believe it. He can't believe it. So he climbs back up, and they do all of this, and he gets up. Now, now I should also say everybody's out there. <laughs> Officials are out there. Doctors are out there. Vince and and Terry Funk and 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 Gerald Briscoe and Pat Patterson. They're out there. Because at this point, shit doesn't hit the fan, and it is, <laughs> this is no. And, and so, and so Andre goes up there, and then they, uh, Mankind goes back up there. So then, now, again, by, by the script, this is this is supposed to happen. He was supposed to choke slam Mankind onto the, onto the, uh, onto the cage. What, what really happened? He, he choked slam Mankind onto the cage. It breaks. Uh, mankind falls into the ring, and there's a chair up there. Because mankind, when he first went up there, he took a chair up there. <laughs> there's a chair up there, and the chair falls down on mankind, falls on his head, knocks him out, and knocks a tooth up his nose. <laughs> and at that, at that point, mankind is gone. He, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean. I mean <laughs> I, 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 I kid you not. I mean, really. At one point, Jay Lawler, Jim Ross, when he when when he, when he, when, he, when he takes the fall off the cage, he said, "Oh my God, he killed him! He killed him!" <laughs> Jay Lawler says, "I think he's dead." <laughs> and and and, and and but at this point, that should have been said right here because he damn near was. He got knocked the hell out. So at this point, Undertaker comes down, and doctors are like, "No, no, no." So, you know, Terry Funk has to, you know, he, you know, he says, "I'm gonna get mankind woke." I'm, uh, let me improvise. So he goes to take her and he starts, you know, he starts what happened with Undertaker. Undertaker gives him the business and everything like that. Uh, so and again, like I said, it's like a three or four move match. Those are the two moves. There was a a a tombstone on thumbtacks. And 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 really that and that, that was really that was other match. It really didn't particularly care. Those only and everybody says it's a five star match. It's not, but it's, it's still it's, it can be one of your favorite matches of all time. And it it is for me. It's the number four match of all time of my favorites. It's the King of the Ring, Hell in a Cell match between Undertaker and Mankind.
<laughs> Number three. Tell us, 1994. Undertaker versus Undertaker. Now, here's just... It's this weird thing. And maybe what I do is I'll show you the number two match of all time is the Kasky match at the Royal Rumble between Undertaker and Yokozuna. That's because these two, they are together. And and, and, and here's why. Um, I've been a wrestling fan my whole life. And um, but you really necessarily you really never ever had the money. To like buy pay per views and like that, wrestling pay per views or anything like that. So I, I did was really just watch Superstars. That was since that was that was on nationally syndicated, and uh, I think I may have watched Raw a few times in the early beginning. But actually, for a while there, like in like in ninety two and ninety three, I kind of stopped watching wrestling. I really did. I kind of I kind of started watching it again um, late nineteen ninety three and going into ninety four January ninety four. So I said, what, you know, and then you know, I wanted for my birthday, what I wanted for my birthday was I wanted to see the Royal Rumble. I wanted to see the Royal Rumble. So we get the Royal Rumble and that my first pay per view for my birthday. Uh, I, I saw it. And, and, uh, and that was um, the title match between Undertaker and Yokozuna was, was on there. And I enjoyed the hell out of it. I think that's when I became an Undertaker fan. That's when my mom, she was a really Undertaker fan. And he, you know, zombie set up, mm. and, and, and she, 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 she kind of loved this one, Joe Zuna too. This Joe Zuna was a big ass man, but you know, and, uh, he, uh, and she was just laughing. She had, she had, she had as much fun as I did watching. She and she, she may tell you she didn't, but she did. My mom had one hell of a time watching Joe Zuna, and she, had her, and she loved the Undertaker. Anyway, um. But she, you know, we watched it, and then really what it comes down to is that the magic gets down to where, um, storyline-wise, Yokozuna has bought, like, he's they bought the services of ten men to take out the Undertaker. They take him out, and then they throw him in the casket, Yokozuna wins the match. As they're rolling the casket back, and the casket starts to smoke. The casket starts to smoke, and then... It gets on the screen. I, I, I just told this story um, on my live Rebel Reaction WrestleMania 33 uh, video, but I'll tell it again for this, so in case you guys didn't watch it. Um, but so he gets up there, and, and, and it's Undertaker, and, 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 and it's probably it's pre-recorded, obviously, because uh, they don't have a camera in the in the damn cast. It's pre-recorded, and he starts talking. And he's saying all of these things, and then all of a sudden, it, it, it's 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 um it goes back and it starts lightning, and light, lightning flashes, and then it becomes an X-ray, and the X-ray starts moving up. And it starts moving up, and then the <laughs> the the guy they they then then like you start seeing like a guy in a coat and glove, and it's the Undertaker, right? And he starts moving up, and he starts flying up, moving up into the ceiling and everything. And then, <laughs> it's, it's just everything. And, my, <laughs> and I'm just in there, I'm mesmerized. And my mom, she goes to me and says, Andre, you know this is fake, right? <laughs> I said, yeah, Ma, I know. But it's, yeah, it was just, it's the greatest thing ever. Which, by the way, that guy, if you, if you do go watch that, the 94, you know, you're going to Rumble, you probably can see it on the WWE YouTube channel. So go over there to the WWE YouTube, YouTube channel. And search for it. They probably do have it. It's the uh, and then the guy that flies is not the Undertaker. It's Marty Jannetty dressed up as the Undertaker. So, um, but that but see but see that leads to the Undertaker takes taking time out. He took a time off for some reason, maybe just for you know general health reasons or whatever. But he took time off. So then the mean little man says, "I'm gonna bring back the Undertaker," and he says, "It's a fake Undertaker." It's obviously a fake Undertaker, and uh, it, it goes back to to this, you know. This, this right here. Uh, so, so the Undertaker and fake Undertaker comes back. So the Undertaker comes back, and he comes back with, with new. He comes back with purple on. Instead of the gray gloves and the gray boots, he's got purple gloves and purple boots on, and 
and everything. And you can see the difference. The uh, Mark Calloway Undertaker, he's doing the. Let me, let me take you to the screen so that you can see. Mark Calloway Undertaker, who for years he's done this. He's, yeah, he never punched. He yeah, with that like an underhand chop. Yeah, underhand throat, you know, throat thrust, throat thrust. Excuse me, damn it. I'm gonna say it here. Uh, throat thrust. Yeah, right there, right. Uh, then the Undertaker, he was going, he was throwing overhand blows. You know, like this, and and this is also like one of my reasons why it's on my top one favorite match matches. In this is because then this was also like my first time I had. I said I had a kind of had, had a party. I invited my friends over, and you know we cooked some pizza, which was actually bad, and my mama got mad at me for saying it was. <laughs> but you know, and she got also upset with me because I let my friends have the pizza, and she didn't really get eaten none. But you know, I just my mother's one other thing I got. Uh, get away from that. Uh, <laughs> I'll start going crazy over, over here. You know, not, you know, mad, not mad crazy, but crying crazy. So, just anyway, you talk about that. This, but it was a great deal, and man, it was so. It was, and, and it, one of my friends were over, and we watched the whole entire thing. And that was the Bret Hart on Hart match that was there, and everything. And oh, uh, it was just, it was so fun, and it was so, so. I thought it was so good. And um, I just, I just really, you know, that brings me back to those times. And it just, it, it was kind of a younger time, a younger generation, when, the, when, the, when, you know, when you really didn't know any better. You know, it, it you know, the match, you know, you, you kind of realize when you saw a good match, but you still, and, and you knew what wrestling was, but you still wanted like your, you know, your, the, the good guys to win and everything like that, but. It, it was. It, it was still. It was interesting. So, my number three greatest match of all time: Undertaker versus Undertaker for SummerSlam 1994. Fun fact: it was also the first event at the Chicago United Center. So, there's that. And then number two is uh, the match from Undertaker and Yokozuna earlier that year, January 94, the 1994. Royal Rumble match, the casket match. And of course, like I said before, the number one match, my favorite match of all time, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, WrestleMania 25. It's it's the greatest match of all time. I don't think anything more needs to be said about it. I've talked about it in my top 10 greatest WrestleMania matches of all time. Uh, and I've talked about it many other times before. So, it, you know, it, it, just, it just is what it is. And, um, Whatever it is, it was just awesome, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. Uh, and uh, they really, they, they went on, they, you know, they went on and said, "Well, listen, we, you know, they were upset that they were on like where it was. They were, they were on like third from last or something like that. It, it wasn't the semi main, wasn't it wasn't on the, before the main event. It was like third from the main event, but they decided to fuck everything up and go out there and steal the show. And that's exactly what they did. And my props to them, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker's. My number one favorite Undertaker match of all time at WrestleMania 25. The greatest match of all time. So that's it for this top 10 list. Um, please give me your thoughts on The Undertaker and your favorite matches. Post it in, post it in the comments section. Um, let me, let, let, and let me know what you think thought of my list. Um, this match, uh, I think, you know, I. I can't really do a tribute to Undertaker like I want to because of money situations and also copyright information. There, are, I guess there are some things like with the Undertaker's music that sends out copyright notices. And I and and and, and this, I get copyright notices all the time. I'm worried about getting a copyright strike. That's what I'm worried about. So I don't really want to do that. Uh, but then I think you might get a strike. Not just a notice, but a strike if you use the Undertaker's. Use I think also use any you know any videos from the WWE that you might get that one as well. So I'm trying kind to of do what I can legally, you know, in the fair use process project using Google images and things like that. Uh, things you seen it out there on, on the things and so I can't do a fair tribute to the Undertaker, but I don't want to give mine. And I also gave it on my rapid reaction video for the WrestleMania 23. Uh, so, uh, WrestleMania 33, excuse me. Uh, so, 
All I can say is thank you, Undertaker, for the years you were what you did from 1991, November of 1991, to what, April 2 of 2017, 26 years. Two decades of destruction. That's awesome. My props to you, Undertaker. My props. That will be it for me this evening. Or this afternoon, whatever you want to call it. It'll be it for me right now. <laughs> I wish say that like that. Uh, G Trip signing off. As always, be good to each other, y'all. And I am out. Rest. Yeah.